Hello everybody to today's tutorial about adding a user foreign key to the Django Pulse tutorial app. Just to start this off, I, we will not do the whole tutorial app, we will just use a GitHub repo, I will link it in the video description. This is as good as it gets, like just use a normal repository of anyone that you want to work on. Um, this little repository just offers you the Pulse app with questions and these questions have choices and these choices have votes that's it nothing more I has a date too <laughs> um, what is our goal our goal is to modify the question model and to say here created by is models dot foreign key uh, we could just say odd dot user here and maybe on delete uh, is model start set null so we don't well I recommend setting on delete but we don't want to lose the question if the user that created the question is deleted we want to keep the question and the results obviously so that would be one way to do it however you should not do that this is really bad what if your application has a custom user model mm, yeah so to overcome this we do from django.contrib.auth import get user model and we select user is dot uh, get user model and we do reference the user model like this get user model takes care about the rest now if we just create a migration here make migrations oh all right yeah the field cannot be null because it's not null <laughs> um, we need to allow it, setting it to null obviously there you go we got a migration I have the habit of renaming migrations so this one will be called questions dot created by there you go. This way you know when you look at your migrations folder with 3500 migrations what this migration kind of does. <laughs> Alright, and let's migrate. And let's take a look at this poll. And it does not show the user information. That is because the admin panel here, admin py, defines the field set and it says only show question text when we also need to show the new created by model. You usually would not have to do this because you would usually would not override field sets but this is part of the Django tutorial so I'll just go with it. Now let's refresh and there you go created by is here. Now obviously you do not well you can select a user here and press save and it is saved but what if you just create a new question how great are cats and very great and meow and now you would have to select a user it's not automatically selected you also have to select the time so my point is is not like why doesn't Django set it automatically but can we set it automatically well, I can keep it like this. How great are cats? Oh, it even says I need to set this field. Okay, I set it to Chen Do, and later I will tell Chen Do why are you posting questions about how great cats are. That's not part of what it should do, right? Okay, we can easily set this user for key, well the foreign key to the user table. We can easily set this automatically. There is a nice little project, it's called Django User Foreign Key, and it goes like this. You call pip install on Django User Foreign Key, you add Django User Foreign Key to your installed apps, you add the User Foreign Key middleware to your middleware, or to your middleware classes depending on your Django version. It is compatible with Django 1.8 to 1.11, and 2.0 compatibility is coming as well. I think it is already compatible. And then you just say user foreign key, auto user app, and that's it. 
Now the user foreign key itself is configured with either auto user or auto user app and that configuration naming comes from the Django date field. Let's take a look at the Django date field. It says auto now and auto now add. Auto now is used as last modified while auto now add is used as created, first created. And the same is true for this user foreign key. Auto user is last modified by and auto user add is created by. So let's go ahead and try this out. First of all we just do pip install Django user foreign key. It's already installed because I installed it uh, five minutes ago. Uh, it is very lightweight. I can show you if you want. Um, so next step, we would have to edit our settings py and add it here, Django user foreign key. And I would have to add it in my middleware, but I'm just copy pasting it from here. Also, please be aware, authentication middleware needs to be enabled for this to work, and it needs to come before the user foreign key middleware. So we just double check authentication middleware is here and we just add the user foreign key middleware at the bottom of this list. Now you might already know the magic that's happening here because it's not really that not that much of a magic. User foreign key middleware is just a middleware that takes the request and stores the user of that request so we can access it later. Now, where would we access the user? Um, well, here, to set it on created by. To do this, we will have to import the Django user foreign key. Uh, it's done like this. From Django user foreign key dot models dot fields, import user foreign key. And instead of models dot foreign key, we use the user foreign key. We do not need to set this. But we do need to set auto user add is true. Now we don't need the user model anymore, so we can remove that from here. User foreign key takes care of that. Just to confirm that everything is alright, let's see if this creates a migration. Yes, it does. It probably does something stupid. I don't know. It allows blank and null. Okay doesn't matter if we would have used the user foreign key from the beginning we would only have one migration now we have two migrations for this I again like to call this something sensible meaningful I call it questions and user foreign key and now I will migrate this done and now let's check the admin panel if everything works according to our plan I can create a new question here and I can say how old are you and we maybe say less than 25 years between 25 and 50 years and above 50 years and I do not set created by I do however set the date and I press save. And if I now look at this question, how old are you? Oh, magic happened. I am set as the author here at created by. That's perfect. That's all I wanted to see. And with that, our tutorial is finished. I just showed you how you would add a user foreign key, an automatic user foreign key, similar as a date time field where you would say, well, just tell me who created this. Similarly, you could just create a created at and say models.datetime field and auto now add equals true. For the purpose of this, let's just do it. Make migrations. Oh, yeah, you have to provide a default value here. Um, in this case I just say null equals true so if it's not set it's just not set it already has a meaningful name that's perfect we will migrate 
and oh I forgot admin panel magic right uh, we have created by so we also have to have created at in here admin panel magic no cannot be specified as it's a non-editable field mm, we cannot specify created at here <laughs> that is great <laughs> Let's see if we create a new question. It is not showing me the created ad information, and on the existing one, it is also not showing me created ad. That is great. That is so great. Maybe I can add created ad in here. No. <laughs> okay, what's happening here is quite easy to explain you can mark a field as non-editable this does not mean that you should not be able to see this field in the admin panel but it means you cannot edit it but what you can do is you can edit here in your admin list display created at and created by so if we go to this one here there we go we can see who created the entry and when it was created. In this case Django did automatically set the created ad field uh, when the migration was run. Um, if we just add another question here and save it then it would add the current time this is alright and so on and if we edit an existing like do you like trains and we add some more question marks the time stays the same so it really just modifies the time at created at and also it modifies the user only at created at if we choose to change the user afterwards then the user stays like this so you still have the ability to change it if you really need to or want to but you have the convenience of not needing to write your own middleware of not trying to guess who the user is or just simply you don't need to access the request because the user foreign key is doing that for you. Now this would be everything I want to show you for this tutorial. If you're interested in how user foreign key works just stay with me uh, otherwise I wish you good luck in using it and feel free to comment, feel free to ask questions and all the information you need for this is in the description video. Thank you for watching. Now for those that are still with me, let's take a look how user foreign key works. Before we look at user foreign key itself, we look at the middleware, the user foreign key middleware here. This middleware is very simple. It gets a request and it gets a response. When it gets a request, it sets this request somewhere. We will look at that. And if it gets a response, obviously the request is done and we can reset this request in our um, set current request method. Okay, our set current request method is here in request and it does only set an attribute in thread locals. So for each Django thread that's running we just generate a thread local and we set the Django user foreign key current request as an attribute. Similarly, we can get the current request and if we can get the current request, we can get the current user from the request because the authentication middleware will make sure that if you're authenticated, the request object will have the user attribute set. That's what's happening here. Now, we have this get current user method that's doing all the magic we need to do. This is now used in the user foreign key field. The user foreign key field overrides a pre-save method and it gets the current user via the get current user method and it sets the current user on the user foreign key on your model in pre-save. So you don't have an extra lookup or anything, it's just another attribute that's automatically set, that's automatically dealt by Django for you. If you have any questions about this or any improvements or any ideas, feel free to leave a comment, post a GitHub issue or a pull request on this repository. The link is in the video description. Thank you for watching and bye bye.